The no. media does not need defending by the media, certainly. <laughs> okay. um, you, you know, and, and so far, the media is... Uh, uh, I mean, the New York Times front page looks like it's 1938 in Germany every day. No, um, it does not. Um, Give me a break. The New Yorker is, as I say, has 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 left all of its standards behind and now become, um, uh, uh, you, you know, an opinion vehicle. That was Fire and Fury author and veteran journalist Michael Wolff defending the Trump administration there from the media in a TV appearance last February. Today, in a behind-the-scenes look at a behind-the-scenes book and how it came about, Bloomberg's Jennifer Jacobs writes that Wolff's foray into the West Wing started when President Trump himself called Wolf to compliment him on that appearance. Wolf's unflattering portrait of President Trump and his staff and his West Wing in the resulting book led the president's lawyers to threaten legal action against the publishers and resulted in a dramatic falling out between President Trump and Steve Bannon. For more, we welcome the aforementioned Jennifer Jacobs to our broadcast, formerly chief politics reporter at the Des Moines Register. She covered the 2016 presidential election as a national political reporter at Bloomberg Politics. She happened to be a terrific follow on Twitter, and she is these days White House reporter for Bloomberg News. Great to have you here on the broadcast. And is the allegation, I know Michael Wolff has rankled uh, Maggie Haberman and other journalists in his travels uh, through the years, is the allegation that he was painting himself as a water carrier for Donald Trump to gain whatever access he could for the book? Well, we know that he told White House aides that the working title of the book was The Great Transition, and they considered that to be um, a, a signal that he was going to be sympathetic to the Trump administration and to their points of view. He told them flat out, I would like to counter the vicious media narrative, and I would like to portray uh, the president in a different way. So White House aides told me some of them felt like he did mislead them a little bit. But there were other factors that also granted Michael Wolff access to this this White House as well. And what were some of those? There were so many things. I had to make a list. I mean, it was it was the flattering. You know, it was the, the flattering book title, but it was also a White House that was prone to backbiting. Uh, so he was able to get people to dish about each other. Uh, he played up his relationship with Trump. So he would go around telling people, I've known for, Trump for a long time. He likes my work. He considers me the best. So he really played that up. Um, AIDS, I was also told AIDS thought that someone else wanted them to speak with Wolf. There was some confusion about whether the White House officially thought this was a good idea or not. Um, I was told that um, one of uh, uh, Trump's closest aides, Hope Hicks, told um, some of the aides, listen, if, if you think that you can spin this in a, a positive way, if you can add to the, a positive media narrative uh, about the, the administration, feel free and talk to this, this person as long as you can make it positive. And almost everyone I talked to, and people are, were very sensitive about admitting that they spoke to Wolf, but everyone I talked to said someone else more senior than them asked them to talk to Wolf. So there was that confusion. Then there was also a rather inexperienced communication staff, their press team, that just didn't monitor this book author, when he was coming in, who he was talking to, what his line of questioning was. Um, I know in past administrations, they were just much more careful about that. But so it was just a, a compilation of different, and, different factors. And Jennifer, is it a crime, journalistic or otherwise, to use whatever means necessary to get access so that you can get the hard material on your tape recorder and reporter's notebook? Well, I think that a lot of journalists try to be upfront about what their agenda is and what the, you know, the theme of their story is going to be. I know Michael Wolf has said, he's been pretty upfront about that, that he said whatever it took. He said whatever it w was necessary to get the access that he needed. And I know, I know there are some White House aides who definitely felt that that was a little bit slippery. And we have about 30 seconds left. Is it also true that the infighting kept the book alive? People would heard what was said about them and then went to Michael Wolf to say, by the way, I wanted to add the following. Exactly. It's it's pretty sensitive in the White House who exactly spoke to Wolf, but I do know that Jared Kushner was one of the people who did speak to him at least briefly. Ryan's Priebus, Katie Walsh, Kellyanne Conway, the budget director, Mick Mulvaney. Uh, a lot of people said they had different reasons for speaking to him. It was either just to correct. They had heard that uh, some criticism was coming their way, that people had been criticizing them to Wolf, so they wanted to correct that. Other people said it was just a brief conversation. Some said, oh, I did talk to him, but it was about a different topic. It wasn't about the book. I, 
I heard a lot of diff different explanations. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.